According to Homer's driving license, he was born on May 12th, 1956 to Mona and Abraham Simpson, and right out of the womb, he was already a bit of a foodie. How'd he get that? This event is also backed up in Homer's edition of the Library of Wisdom, which is another key piece of evidence that I'll be using for this video. So yeah, apparently Homer was an accident. You were an accident! <gasps> <gasps> But he was in fact just one of three of Abe's accidents. Because he has a half-sister called Abby who lives with her mum Edwina who is Abe's British fling from World War II and he also has a half-brother called Herb who he'd eventually get to meet later on as an adult. Homer? Herb? Herb was a result of Abe cheating on Mona with a lady at a carnival and so poor Herb was left at Shelbyville Orphanage which is a fact that Abe and Mona kept as a secret for a very long time so Homer would grow up respecting his father. Little did Abe know though that Mona also cheated on him but with a lifeguard called Mason Fairbanks who would later believe that he was Homer's biological father but turns out he's not. All in all, not the best way to start a new family, but hey ho. And so, life begins for Homer J. Simpson. So, to make this video happen, I have gone over 765 episodes of The Simpsons, where I've looked out for flashbacks, flash forwards, and basically any kind of clues about the past, present, and future of Homer in the show. I've also looked through the comics and the books in order to make this timeline the most detailed it could possibly be. And so to fully cover the life of Homer Simpson, I should first establish his age, and that he and all the characters in Springfield exist on a floating timeline. Which is why we have seen Homer as a teenager in pretty much every single decade since the 1970s. But despite the complexities of floating timelines and changing ages, as well as conflicting flashbacks, flash forwards and present day events, I have been able to build a pretty consistent timeline for Homer. This is by sticking to his age rather than the date specified in the episodes. And yeah, alright, I do know I already released a timeline on Homer around three years ago, but let's face it, a lot has happened on the show over that time and I'd also like to think that I've improved a bit. As I discussed in my Bart Simpson video, The Simpsons exists in a floating timeline. Oh man, god, that is so hard to listen to. So yeah, anyway, this is the complete, complete timeline of Homer J. Simpson. Together, the Simpsons family lived on the old farm just off of rural Route 9, outside of Springfield, which is presently known as Amos Pearson's Moose Farm. And joining them was the family dog Bongo, aka Homer's best friend. Ever since Homer was a baby, Bongo always knew how to stop him crying. And fun fact, this dog was likely named after Bongo, the rabbit from Groening's comic strip Life in Hell, which is also the name of his publishing company Bongo Comics, which I will touch on more a bit later. At the farm, Homer kept himself busy by watching the family's Radiation King TV. And the radiation was so strong that Homer's shadow was literally burnt into the wall. Which means that Homer has been exposed to radiation from being a child all the way into adulthood when he works for the power plant. So no wonder his brain's a little fried. Anyway, he would watch that thing for hours. And one press talk from JFK inspired him to one day become president. A dream that was quickly squashed by his dad. We've got a whole system set up to keep people like you from ever becoming president. Abe's lack of paternal instinct and, let's face it, tact would be a reoccurring sore in Homer's life. And time and time again, we have been given different past events that blame him for more serious things in Homer's life, like alcohol abuse. This includes when Abe gave him his first ever sip of beer, which caused Homer to wrap his red wagon around a tree. Let's never drink again. So yeah, Abe's definitely not the most responsible dad. I mean, even when we look at the Simpsons comics, Abe was still pretty unconcerned with Homer's safety. Like in one issue, Homer was late for the school bus and ended up on an overnight adventure to Ogdenville. And Abe, well, he couldn't give a crap. As seen in the comic, Lil Homer, which dives a little deeper into Homer's childhood. But I'll come back to this particular comic later on in the video. So, when Homer wasn't watching TV and being exposed to radiation, he would explore the farm, planting hot dog trees and spooking the cows. And this particular event caused the cows to produce sour milk and so the bank had to foreclose on the farm. When the family moved to Springfield, Mona and Abe's marriage only got more divided as he preferred to spend all day watching football, which would backfire on him when one particular game showed Mona the beauty of sideburns and loose locks of a particular football player called Joe Willie Namath. So yes, Mona was awakened by free love and free hair, which ignited something inside of her, so she joined a bunch of hippies. 
Mina attempted to include her family in this new lifestyle by taking them to Woodstock, and little Homer fully embraced his new groove. This may well have been Homer's first introduction to music, which is a passion that would melt into his life time and time again. And as his mother rose through the ranks from flower power to eco warrior, she spent considerably less time with her son, therefore leaving him more or less in the care of the refrigerator and Colonel Sanders, hinting at Homer's late dependence on food for his happiness. Even still, Mona made sure to never neglect her boy completely. Like when Abe scolded him for breaking one of his model aeroplanes, Homer found solace by baking pies with her, which would become one of his fondest childhood memories. For each pie she made, she wrote down the recipe and put a special note to me on the back. Now, the Simpsons did attempt some kind of normal family life by going on the occasional vacation. But while out fishing, Homer admits to Abe that he heard him and his mum fighting. But his dad denied this, preferring more to shield Homer from the conflict. After this, they'll capsize and come back to camp empty-handed. And so, Homer believes that he ruined their vacation, and was the real reason why his mum would later run away. This is a thought that would traumatise Homer for the longest time until many years later when he finally found out the truth. And when the time came that I had to leave your father, I knew you were in good hands. In short, Homer's childhood seemed like one long torment, often overhearing his parents argue. And even while Mona and Abe attempted to salvage their relationship at marriage counselling, Homer was left to eat his feelings away at Deuce's Caboose Chili Dogs. This is in part why Homer loves food and loves fireworks, because he'd eat his feelings and with fireworks, it was the only thing that would block out his parents bickering. On Homer's first day of school, around five or six years old, Abe's questionable parenting continued, giving him this advice. You're dumb as a mule and twice as ugly. If a strange man offers you a ride, I say take it. But as it turns out, he wasn't as dumb as a mule because he won spelling bees and even Abe himself admitted that he was as smart as a monkey. But that's until the Simpsons gene kicked in. Oh, ain't no big deal. All Simpsons start to lose their smarts around your age. But this theory is still up for discussion because its effects could have been well due to what Homer did while he was alone, like electrocuting himself while playing Operation or sticking countless crayons up his nose. Sixteen! Woohoo! But what do you think? Why is Homer so dumb? Put a DNA emoji if you think it's because of the Simpsons gene, this crayon if you think it's because of the crayons, or this radioactive emoji because of his radiation poisoning. But maybe it's a mix of all three of them. I don't know. Let me know in the comments. I am too smart. I am too smart. I am too smart. Homer seemed to be lonely a lot of the time too, and the kids at school didn't make this any easier, even forming the cruel, cruel No Homer's Club in a treehouse. But you let in Homer Glumplet. <laughs> it says No Homer's. It's worth noting that two episodes of the show reference Homer's mother leaving him at six years old, to cope with love and gone a be gone. And there's also some that point to him being nine years old. So for the sake of simplicity, let's go with six years old. So by this point, Homer's mother was still rallying against the man, in particular, Mr. Burns and his germ warfare lab to the point where she and her eco-warriors detonated an antibiotic bomb. And while the hippies fled running over Mr. Burns, Mona was the only one who tried to help him. And instead of thanking her, Monty vowed revenge, forcing her to leave her son and go into hiding. So Mona ran away in the dead of night, leaving only a message with the real truth for Abe to tell Homer. But Abe decided to tell Homer that she died. When's mommy coming back? She's not. Why not? Ah, uh, she's dead. I don't know, hold him. If losing your mum wasn't bad enough, it's also around the same age that Homer would also lose his dog Bongo. Because after his biological weapons lab was destroyed, Mr. Burns soon turned his attention to nuclear energy, opening up the nuclear power plants. And to get on everyone's good sides, he gave away isotope cuddly toys to all the kids in town. But after biting Mr. Burns' arm, he was sent away into hiding at a neighbouring farm. And even though this was done to protect Bongo from being put down, Homer was devastated, deciding to leave his sweatshirt with his best friend so he'd always remember him. No! No! No, Bongo! <laughs> A few months after this, Homer would go on to rescue Bongo, but he saw that he was now very happy living with his new family, under a new name Hendrix. So believing he had forgotten about him, Homer was heartbroken, but more on that a bit later. 
So by this point, Mr. Burns had led to Homer's dog being given away and his mother abandoning him. So it's just really, really sad that later on Homer would actually go on to work for him. So I say good for him for sleeping on the job and full out skiving to go to Moe's. Stick it to the man. So with Mona out of their lives, Abe would work as a busboy at a restaurant and it's here where he'll meet singer Rita Lafleur. They fall in love and the two become a musical duo with Abe on the piano. And in turn, Homer would get a brand new mummy when Abe and Rita got married. But when she got the call with the exciting news that her and Abe could go on tour to Europe as a musical duo, Abe chose to look after a very vulnerable Homer, deciding Europe's no place for a six-year-old. Are you okay, Daddy? Well, of course I'm okay, I'm with you! Therefore showing us, at least, that he is taking being a single dad a bit more seriously. We also see in Simpsons comic issue number 24 that a maybe six-year-old Homer would be left home alone while Abe went to buy soda. So Homer gorged on food while making a trap to catch criminal snake. Oh no, wait, Cobra. Maybe he's Snake's dad. But it all backfires when a young Edna knocks on the door trying to sell some cookies, and Homer gets stuck in the trap himself. Which begs the question, if Homer knew Edna since they were kids, how did he get her name wrong? I've been calling her Crandall. Why didn't someone tell me? Oh, I've been making an idiot out of myself. <laughs> a couple of years pass and eight-year-old Homer has dreams of being the richest man ever. I wish when I grow up, I'll be richer than everybody. <laughs> Now we also see that the Simpsons gene has really settled in here, but still, Homer was a bright-eyed kid with very big dreams. So with his mum gone and to pass the time, Homer and Abe played chess together, but when Homer got too good, Abe stopped playing, and instead introduced Homer to a brand new game, watching him drink whiskey. Living with an alcoholic father, it's not surprising that Homer would eventually become one himself. And although Abe did stop giving Homer beer when he crashed his wagon, Homer would get another taste for beer again during a Duff Parade. Beer transformed that cute little boy into the man you see before you. But if we want to get really pedantic, this love for beer may just be rooted in the Simpsons DNA, going all the way back to the Stone Age, when Homer's caveman ancestor tasted the first Duff ever made. So now let's look into the Simpsons comics and see if they can provide any more insight into Homer's childhood. So, Bongo Comics released an aforementioned one-off called Lil Homer in 2012. And I won't go into all the stories, but I will talk about one in particular called Mean Genie. In it, Lil Homer discovers a magical lamp inside an old box, and a genie pops out. When his dad stumbles in on them, Homer asks him if he should ask for a new wife for Abe, and therefore a new mum for him. But much like Grandpa in the TV show, he's completely dismissive, saying wives are nothing but trouble. So instead, Homer simply wishes that he never found the lamp in the first place. Even though the Simpsons comics exist outside the show's canon, I did say I was going to include everything. So there you go. And if you'd like to learn more about the Simpsons comics, then check out my book, Collecting the Simpsons, available now on Amazon. At the age of 10, Homer attended a summer camp for underprivileged boys, where he'd meet lifelong friends Lenny, Carl, and Moe. It's also here where he'd unknowingly meet his future wife Marge and had their first kiss. But by calling himself Elvis and having an eye patch and Marge with burnt brown hair, it would mean the two wouldn't recognize each other until years later. Only really understanding what had happened when they matched up the two halves of the heart-shaped stone that they had kept for decades. When he comes back from camp, A buys him a very dodgy trampoline from salesman Ned Flanders. And Homer sets his sights on getting into the Duff Book of World Records by attempting to shatter the 500 bounce barrier. It turns out that the trampolines could actually electrocute you if you bounce too much, so just before Homer could do his final bounce, Neddy jumped in and pushed him away to safety. So maybe that's the real reason why Homer hates Ned. He ruined his childhood dream of entering the Duff Book of World Records. Or maybe the writers included this many years later, not really caring about the continuity. So instead of jumping up and down on his trampoline, 11-year-old Homer then jumped into the scary world of puberty, going from an angelic choir boy on your knees. Oh. to, well, this. Hi. Hey, my voice just changed. And at 12 years old, Homer, Lenny and Carl spent a summer being boys, doing what boys do, like, you know, sitting under the stars and talking about what boys talk about. Have you heard about this internet thing? Yeah, it's the inner netting they invented to line swim trucks. 
And speaking of the internet, and no, not the one in your swim shorts, I'd like to thank this video sponsor, NordVPN. NordVPN is the all-in-one tool that shields you from malware, trackers and ads, and it stops websites from logging your internet activity and therefore maintains your privacy. It also has a dark web monitor which notifies you if someone obtains and leaks your credentials. NordVPN has also proven to be the fastest VPN out there too, which is great for streaming. For example, I really wanted to watch Mary and the Witch's Flower on Netflix, but it's not available in the UK. So I just switched over to a US server on my phone and reopened Netflix and up it came. And just one account can protect up to 10 devices, so you can share it with your friends and family too. It's also totally risk-free because of the 30-day money-back guarantee, which is really great if you just want to check it out. So if you want to see if NordVPN can help you, I have an exclusive deal that gives you four bonus months completely free, which you can check out by clicking my link down below in the description. But getting back to this Blundiers episode, the boys' fun was almost ruined by young fat Tony and his cronies when they stumbled across his wacky backy. But luckily, Mo saved them with his trusty air rifle. We better scram. 18 more pumps. That could break the skin. <laughs> a triumphant event, right up until Homer would come across the rotting corpse of Wayland Smithers Sr., a horrifying memory that he'd suppress for many, many years. And at 13, he'd endure a memory perhaps equally as horrifying, his introduction to the birds and the bees. Yo, Keeper, those two monkeys are killing each other. They're having sex. Oh? At the age of 14, Homer experienced a milestone event, eating nachos for the very first time in the Bolorama. I flicked the face of God. It's also around this time that Homer ventured into his first career in music, being a one-man band street performer. But this job was cut short when he was attacked by a monkey. <laughs> So failing that, Homer then moved on to his second job, being a DJ at a Chuck E. Cheese style restaurant called Razzle Dazzles. And again, he was able to bring in his musical talent when one of the animatronics broke down and he had to come up with a rap on the spot. Sauce to your pizza! But A, being an unsupportive father, dampened Homer's musical ambitions. You're a fool and your dreams are garbage. Now get out of here before I say something I'll regret. Despite his dad putting him down, Homer loved that job, right up until his boss, Old Gil, was arrested for drug possession and Razzle Dazzles had to be shut down. And Homer not only lost his job, but also his best friends when the robots were taken away. No, don't take my friends! No! <laughs> I just want to say here that it's really weird seeing Homer dressed up like this millennial 90s teenager when we've been so used to seeing him as a 70s teen for the majority of his flashbacks. But I completely understand why they chose to do this. Because in the way we was, their prom was in 1974, 49 years ago. So timeline wise, it just wouldn't really make sense because that would mean that Homer was nearly 70 in the present day. And to explain this in their own words, showrunner Matt Selman tweeted out, The Simpsons is a 32-year-old series where the characters do not age, so the canon must be elastic, contradictory, or silly. This does not mean other beloved classic Simpsons flashback shows didn't happen. None of this happened, it's all made up, every episode is its own Groundhog Day that only makes sense for that story. If that. But what do you guys think? Are you a fan of seeing Homer as a teen in different decades, or would you rather they stick to one period? So moving on, and it might have been around this time that Homer competed in a gymnastics tournament, and Abe was equally as supportive. Uh, that's what I get for having faith in you. By 16, Homer had just learned how to drive, but more importantly, found out that his mother was alive. Who's alive? No one. I'm gonna find her. He confronts his dad about it, who spills the beans while eating his beans, more specifically, his lonely man chili beans. I like the side gags. Anyway, he tells him all about Mona's escape from the FBI and the two go on a road trip to try and find her. I need to know what happened to her. Oh, I can't say no to that face. And on this road trip, Homer and Abe finally start connecting as father and son, and Abe even gives up the drink for him. Meanwhile, they are unaware that they are being followed by the government, who they lead straight to Mona. Because when they track her down at a gas station, she's forced to go on the run again. 
While I do enjoy these sweet moments between Homer and his dad, I'm really not a fan of this episode in terms of what it does for Mona and Homer's relationship because it basically retconned all we knew from Mother Simpson. I also think it makes Mona look really, really bad here. It makes it look as if she's more concerned about her own self-preservation rather than being an actual mother. And bouncing back from that, say what you want about A, but at least he was there. He gave Homer a roof over his head, food in his belly, and he also chose to put his boy first even when faced with a very exciting new life with a new love, Rita Lafleur. So moving on, and it's around this time that Homer almost tried pot for the first time. Because he was handed a joint by Carl, but just before he could smoke it, he was caught by Wiggum and his police dog, who smelt the doobie and bit the crap out of his crotch. And watching this now, it does make me wonder if this particular joint came from Fat Tony's wacky backy stash. Anyway, it wouldn't be until Homer's adulthood where he would get the chance to try the green again. Now a high school senior and Homer was still a bit of an outsider, often teased by the other kids. But thankfully, Homer had one close friend in Barney Gumble, And together, perhaps projecting their own insecurities, bullied Smithers. Those cats were best as king. But despite being pretty unpopular, Homer still thought he was the bee's knees in school. I think you're cool, Homer Simpson. Sandra, that was mean. And he was so deluded that he ran for senior class president and everyone voted for him as a joke. But he never knew he got the most votes because his principal hid the votes to spare his feelings. And when Homer learned about this many years later, he was furious, feeling that his life would have been completely different if he was senior class president. And while out at a restaurant, Luigi overhears this and says that his chef can make a sauce that opens a window into the past. And it's in the soup where we see an alternative past where Homer won class president and therefore became the most popular kid in school. He was so popular that the Maud Flanders wanted to date him. But even though he goes to prom with the most popular cheerleader, he still longs for Marge. So he asks her out to the dance instead. They fall in love and he gets a high paying job with Mr. Burns, who's going to become so rich that he has a mansion and Marge and him don't have any kids. Where are the kids? You use protection, we never had any. But again, this is just an alternative past. So going back to the main timelines and by this point, Homer could be best described as a slacker. He's a pretty experienced drinker by this point, but disguises it to A by saying he's building a beer can collection. I just collect the cans, daddy. Now grab yourself a beer and get me one too. We learn more through his song, it was a very good beer, like how he used a fake ID to get alcohol. He would also be a bad influence in Barney, leading him down a very dark path of alcoholism, which ultimately made him fail his sats. His high school picture really painted this point in his life, showing his dependence on alcohol and food, therefore hindering his academic success. Sports? None. Honors? None. This is later confirmed when we find out that Homer didn't graduate from high school as he was unable to pass Remedial Science 1A. But strangely, he was still a shoo-in for college, but didn't attend because he decided to steal a ham from a dog instead. Come on, give me that ham, you stupid dog! Come on, give me that! Get. And after seeing how much I've still got to pay for my student loans, I wish I chased a dog too. Now, going back slowly, and one day in high school, Homer is sent to detention for smoking, and is here where he'd meet future wife and soulmate Marjorie Bouvier for the very first time. Until they find out about that camping trip, that is. So, we all know the story by now, but basically, Homer is smitten and asks Marge for French lessons. She falls for his boy's charms until she finds out that he lied to her about needing a tutor and says that she never wants to see him again. But Homer isn't the brightest and still turns up to take her to prom. But she's already got a date, Artie Ziff. Eventually, Marge realizes just how sweet Homer really is, especially after her disastrous date with Artie. So she decides to give a dejected Homer a lift home and we got one of the cutest moments ever in Simpsons history. I'm gonna hug you and kiss you and then I'll never be able to let you go. And it's from this point that we can presume they became an official couple. At 20 years old, Homer and Marge spend their days biking together and during one ride, Homer crashes and they find themselves in need for a good Samaritan. Hey, name's Ned Flanders. As the elephant said to the peanut vendor, toss those in my trunk. Little did they know though that they were hitchhiking with honeymooners and future neighborinos Ned and Maud Flanders. 
The two couples journey to cozy cabins, but when Flanders finds out that the two aren't married, he spends his entire honeymoon making sure that Homer and Marge don't commit unwed sin. Oh, what better way to celebrate our wedding night than by keeping an unmarried couple apart? Around a year later, at the age of 21, Homer achieves his dream of going on the gong show with Barney. And it could have also been around this time where Homer had his disastrous trip to New York. But when he got back, he and Marge worked on Krusty's adaptation of The Sands of Space as personal assistants. And even though the film was a total disaster, at least they got to make out a lot. While out in the desert filming, however, Homer is kidnapped by the cartel and held for ransom. Krusty refuses to pay, so Marge and their friends go to find him Mad Max style. They were able to get Homer back, but they had to forfeit Krusty's film reels. When Marge got accepted into college, a 22-year-old Homer started to work at his father's laser tag business to pay for her tuition, only for her to go and fall for the professor. Therefore, a heartbroken Homer forms a band called Sargasm, which becomes insanely popular, even inspiring Kurt Cobain to create Nirvana. Your cousin, Marvin Cobain? You know that new sound you're looking for? Well, listen to this. But luckily, Marge realizes her mistake in leaving Homer and they get back together. Again, this is another example of a sliding timeline with this 2008 episode in particular really annoying some fans, basically saying it fundamentally changed the continuity of the show. Personally, I feel there are ways to do flashbacks without calling too much attention to the time period by not focusing too much on the pop culture stuff. By doing that, the ambiguity allows you to be more flexible and not tied to a certain period. Or, you know, maybe they should just stop doing flashback episodes. What do you think? At 24 years old, Homer was doing a lot of things. He was selling manure out of his car. Get your manure! Was a professional infomercial question asker. Um, I know Super Clean cleans, but does it scrub? Had his own garage band and did open casket caricatures. Did he have any hobbies? Get out of here! He had a very steady relationship with Marge though, but still, kids were very much out of the picture. Kids? No way. You'll never see a couple of rugrats tying me down. At 27, Homer and Marge are now living in an apartment together where they have parties every single night. Homer works at a new hotshot company called Flashmouth and the two of them are making out all of the time and going to the movies. In short, they're living their best lives. But it was after one such movie night while watching The Empire Strikes Back that Marge and Homer go all frisky at a golf course. This resulted in pregnancy and Homer tearing out half his hair. You're pregnant? <laughs> at this point, 28-year-old Homer was still figuring out his career, currently working at Sir Puttelot by turning a crank to spin a windmill. But still wanting to do the right thing, Homer pops the question which Marge happily accepts. Yeah! You're gonna marry me! In your face, everybody! <laughs> They get married at Shotgun Pete's wedding chapel. If he has $10 worth of chips, you may kiss the bride. Next! And spend their wedding reception at a truck stop and a wedding cake reading to a whale of a wife. Yeah, it's safe to say Marge is less than impressed with their underwhelming wedding, but then in the Simpsons movie, their wedding reception did actually look super cute. So who's to say, eh? Anyway, wanting to support his new growing family, Homer applies for any job he could get. First getting hired and fired from Old Springfield. What a crappy candle. You've ruined our vacation. And then tries to make it as a knife salesman and a guard dog ragdoll. But after the repo men attempt to take away Marge's wedding ring, Homer bursts into Mr. Burns' office and demands a job. If you're looking for the kind of employee who takes abuse and never sticks up for himself, I'm your man. This trait of ultimately doing the best thing for his family is a very honourable one that Homer will continue to show throughout his life. And even though it doesn't seem like it now, when he first started at the nuclear power plant, Homer was a real go-getter. No time for donuts. I've got to get to work. Work, work, work. He was so good, in fact, that he was just under Smithers in the hierarchy chart. Homer was also emotionally supportive of Marge during her pregnancy, getting very stuck into her Lamarge training. And when it came to the real thing, he rushes into hospital just in time to watch Bart's birth and was introduced to his little angel. Why, you little? He did that on purpose. How could he? He's only 10 minutes old. Little did they know though, that while they were asleep, a mysterious doctor comes in to check in on them. Mom? When I heard about the baby, I just had to come and see him. 
Yeah, again, totally undoing the fact that Homer thought she had died in the episode Mother Simpson, but I am including everything here, even the stuff I don't like. One year into their marriage and parenthood, and Marge and Homer are more in love than ever. And although their marriage is going well, looking after a one-year-old Hellraiser is really trying Homer's tiny patience. Don't you ever do that again, understand? Beep. So clueless as to how to parent this little devil child, Marge and Homer go to Reverend Lovejoy for advice, which is to have another. You're pregnant again? <laughs> It was shortly before this the couple bought their first ever family home, 742 Evergreen Terrace, with a little help from Grandpa who sold his own house to give them a loan of $15,000. So how long before you ship Grandpa off to the old folks home? About three weeks. <laughs> like I said before, Grandpa wasn't the greatest dad, but he did love his son, giving up his own house so his son's family could have theirs. So two years after Bart, Marge gave birth to Lisa. But the new house and the new sister didn't quite put Bart on the straight and narrow, and Homer was still terrorised regularly. I got gumptious. At 31, Homer grew to see the differences in their children and absolutely adored his little, little Lisa. Daddy happy. Daddy very happy. And his paternal instincts must have grown exponentially, as had even helped deliver baby Todd into the world. But when he wasn't terrorised by Bart, 34-year-old Homer was bullied by his sisters-in-law, Patty and Selma, even volunteering for army experiments to avoid having dinner with them. When his plans failed though, he had to go on a family picnic with them, but kicked them out of the car and left them stranded. Eat gravel, hags! After this, Homer and Marge got stranded themselves by running out of fuel, so they journeyed to a nearby house where a glamorous party was happening. Homer flirts with a redhead called Sylvia and even gets into a sushi fight with her, and Marge is pissed. But not to worry Marge, because a moustache man soon sweeps her off her feet into the skies and then away to cosy cabins. You remember that place that Marge and Homer went to with Ned and Maud Flanders on their honeymoon? It's all coming together. However, after they both almost committed adultery, they decide to ignore their wandering eyes and get together once again. Wanna go for a lakeside snuggle? Homer Simpson, you devil! Also, now as a father of two, Homer starts up the barbershop quartet with Principal Skinner, Barney Apu, and not Chief Wiggum. Dr. Doolittle is Chief Wiggum. This bird's gonna fly! <laughs> And after their smash hit, Baby on Board becomes mainstream, the band are catapulted into stardom and they travel the world, collecting Grammys as they go. But eventually things go to ruin with in-band politics, member changes and even fights, so the band splits up. Ultimately here, for Homer, he made his family the priority. The fame was fun, but he saw his kids as a more meaningful and exciting way for him to spend his time. I miss you, Daddy. I miss you too, honey. Which is super, super cute, and again, shows how Homer always puts his family first. At 35, Homer and Marge were settling in nicely into nuclear family life, with Homer sacrificing even more to make his little girl happy, getting her a saxophone rather than buying his house an air conditioning unit. To Lita, never forget your daddy love. While doing this timeline, I realised that I really liked how Homer breaks the cycle of the abuse he got from his own father. He does this by supporting and nurturing his children's talents. So whereas Abe told Homer he could never be president, Homer encouraged Lisa's love for music, even if he does find it grating at times. It's also around this time that the Simpsons vacation to the Grand Canyon with neighbours Maud and Ned Flanders. But when they got lost on their trail, it's left up to Ned and Homer to find food and provide for their families in crisis. This really helped the guys build the foundations of a blossoming friendship, which we are very sure will remain strong for years to come. Oh, by the way, I was being sarcastic. Well, duh. At 37 years old, Homer receives a paycheck clearing him of all of his debts, so naturally, he quits his job in spectacular fashion. That's for employing me for eight years! <laughs> he then starts his dream job at the bowling alley, and he loves his new carefree lifestyle. But after some snuggle time with Marge, she gets pregnant, and Homer realises that his bowling alley salary won't cover three kids. Marge is pregnant? No! 
So Homer has to quit his dream job and goes to crawl back to Mr. Burns, who made sure his return was as humiliating as possible. And even though Homer wasn't thrilled that he was having another kid, when Maggie did come along, it was love at first sight. Oh, Marge, we have a wonderful baby girl. Thus leading on to one of my favorite ever endings of a Simpsons episode. Again, Homer isn't the best parent, but he always comes through for his family in the end. He leaves the best job in the world that he ever had to a soul-destroying dead-end job just to provide for his family. And we see this again and again. Like when he left his amazing life working for Hag Scorpio because his family didn't like Cypress Creek. He will always do what's best for them, and not just for himself. This is what really separates The Simpsons for me as a show, because it has the humour, but at the centre, there's always that heart, where the characters do have to make very relatable compromises to solve very relatable problems. So there's a long running gag in the show where Homer tries to convince Marge that something is his lifelong dream, and then she points to a picture of him doing what he said was his lifelong dream a year ago. Like this one. Your lifelong dream was to run out on the field during a baseball game, and you did it last year, remember? And of course, this one. Your boyhood dream was to eat the world's biggest hoagie, and you did it at the county fair last year, remember? So instead of listing every iconic moment that Homer has been through over the show's present day, I instead wanted to focus on how this present day Homer has changed over the years. Because let's face it, to experience Homer in the present, it's probably far more enlightening just to watch the show. So first off, let's nail down his age, because it has changed. He was 34 in the earlier episodes, 36 in season 4, 38 and 39 in season 8, and then 40 in the 18th season. This idea of ageing Homer up is spoken about by writers Bill Oakley and Josh Weinstein in the DVD commentary for season 6's Grandpa First Sexual Inadequacy. The Simpsons gets weirder and weirder the longer it, it Homer goes Homer was on. 36, I think, until the season 6 or 7 where he decided it was just too much. To have so him be he added aged big two, two years. years. Yes. Yeah, that was our nod. This also aligns with the increasing average age for a first-time father, which has changed significantly since The Simpsons aired in 1989. Now, in terms of Homer's changing character, let's now listen to this clip taken from Homer's earliest era on The Simpsons. Catch the ball so we can all go out for some frosty chocolate milkshakes. And compare that to now. Oh my gorgeous boy, I've never loved you more! Pretty different, right? Well, that's because Homer's voice actor, Dan Castellaneta, was first inspired to impersonate actor Walter Methal for Homer's voice but then he chose to loosen his vocal cords to make it far easier to be expressive, and less uptight. And it wasn't just his voice, because overall Homer did become less uptight. In the earlier seasons, Homer seemed far quicker to anger and was shown to be very proud. We saw this in season 1's There's No Disgrace Like Home, where Homer is actually embarrassed by his family's behaviour, so much so that he takes them to family therapy. We also saw how he wanted to actually unalive himself when he felt like a failure after losing his job. Yep, definitely not the same guy who charged into a cake on the back of a donkey. In short, Homer became a lot more buffoonish as the seasons rolled, and less serious. Episodes then started focusing more on Homer and in particular his jerk ass moments, and so the term jerk ass Homer was established by many fans of the show. And soon enough, the question of when jerk ass Homer really began became as convoluted as when The Simpsons' Golden Age ended with each fan having their own answers. But I do think that Homer's jerk ass days are definitely over, especially since season 30. And sure, he is lazy, very corruptible and buffoonish, but he is still willing to put his family before everything else. You actually helped! I did, you know what? I think I'm finally ready to be a dad! I'm gonna tell my wife! Also, he has far less outbursts that are directed at his wife and children, stripping him back to being a more lovable husband and father. As well as this, it's worth noting that in the present, Homer confronts a lot of mistakes that were made in his past. He made up for his and Marge's shoddy wedding, got closure with Grandpa as well as Mona, and finally got to meet his long-lost half-brother Herb and sister Abby. Although it seemed like Homer wasn't really sure what was going on here. Lady, you're gorgeous. You make Dame Edna look like a dude! Why, thank you! This is as well as realising that his beloved Bongo did remember him after all. You saved Bongo. I never understood that till now. We would also see that his friendships would remain consistent, as well as his relationship with food and beer. But nonetheless, even though Homer J. Simpson didn't fulfill his childhood dream of being the richest man ever, he's done what millionaires could only dream of, staying the exact same age for 35 years. 
So before we head on over to the future, I just want to address that yes, the future episodes aren't considered canon, which is why things start to look a bit strange by the end of this video. But hey, that's all part of the fun. By saying that, I will say that there are a handful of particular episodes, like the ones listed on screen right here, that do appear to be canon because they are the most consistent. So in Homer's 40s, and after years of gluttony, Marge begs Homer to change and take better care of himself. And he agrees by starting to walk up the stairs two steps at a time, but the overexertion causes him to suffer a heart attack, fall down the stairs, and eventually die. The town holds Homer's funeral at church, but just before being cremated, Professor Frank bursts in and announces that he has cloned Homer. I was able to put Homer's memories in the body of a clone. But the new clone doesn't last very long, dying the very next day after consuming too much potato salad. And so he's cloned again, and again, and again. And while cloning might seem very outlandish, cloning has been a real thing in Springfield for a very long time. We have seen Burns as clones, Moe's clones, and let's not even talk about Mole Man's clones. At 45 years old, Homer revisits his brief relationship with Mary Jane, but this time, Chief Wickham is actually involved. You're here too? Yeah, must be weird for you. <laughs> and it's here where Homer and his boy finally see that they're not so different after all. Truth is, I'm just like you. A misunderstood guy who wants his family to love him. It's around the same time where we find out that Homer's dad Abe has now passed on. Or did he? Because it turns out that Abe was actually cryogenically frozen as it was way cheaper than keeping him in a retirement home. Sadly though, it's also around this time where Lisa finds out about Marge's possible plan to separate from Homer, and so it's up to her to try and convince Homer to stop drinking to save his marriage. Things didn't work out too well because only a couple of years later we find out that Homer and Marge are now separated and still bickering. Homer, we're separated now. You can't just walk in without knocking. It turns out that Marge divorces 46-year-old Homer after he blows their entire life savings on an underwater house. He's of course still in love with his ex-wife, but she's now dating Krusty the Clown. We split up. It's all cool. I I'll kill you! All right. All right. But like always, Homer and Marge will finally reconcile, and Marge even changes her mind on the underwater house. While at college, Lisa meets a chap called Hugh. They quickly fall in love, get engaged, but Lisa is worried about him meeting her family. In short, Hugh is shocked by their table manners, especially when Homer demands that he pulls his finger. I said pull my finger. Even still, Homer attempts to make Hugh feel at home by driving on the left-hand side of the road and giving Hugh his prized set of pig cufflinks that he wore on his own wedding day. On the day of the wedding, 54-year-old Homer tells Lisa how important she is to him and how she's his proudest achievement. You helped me understand my own wife better and taught me to be a better person. And when Lisa realizes that Homer is wearing the cufflinks and not Hugh, she confronts him. This turns into an argument and the cancellation of the wedding, all because Lisa stood by her family. After this, Lisa graduates from college and we learn that Homer is in debtor's prison. I thought selling my house in one lung would be enough to pay for college, but it just paid for the meal plan. <gasps> At age 59, while exiting a food bank, Homer is gunned down by the police, who mistakes his sub sandwich for a gun. And although this appears to be the end of the big guy, let's not forget about his many, many clones. So in his 60s, Homer is living with Marge at 742 Evergreen Terrace and is definitely not a fan of virtual fudge. Blah, this virtual fudge tastes like crap. He would also watch his little girl excel in politics, like her running for president as leader of the Democratic Robot Zombie Coalition. It could be presumed that she won this election and thus gave Homer and Marge the opportunity to hunt for hidden treasure at the White House. <laughs> Marge, I did it! I found Lincoln's gold! There aren't many glimpses into Homer's future in the Simpsons comics, but we do get one in the issue number 47. In it, a much older Bart is rushed to hospital after eating too many fish logs, and a concerned Homer stays by his side. And in this issue, we also find out that Maggie and Gerald Sampson are an official item, Agnes is now a head inside of a jar, and Utter is now a world-famous actor who pays for Bart's surgery. Yeah, reading the Simpsons comics puts you on quite a journey. At 69, Homer is still sober and spends his days making ships inside of glass bottles. I'd smash him all for one lousy beer. Bart comes over with his two sons, Jiff and Skippy, and Homer is shown to be a really fantastic grandpa, and you can tell how much he loves spending time with his grandkids. 
even helping heal the divide between them and Barb by explaining that they should really give their father another chance. Your dad may be a little immature, but I know he loves you, so you ought to give him a chance. It's also around this time that he and Marge attended their 50-year high school reunion. Is that a plunger stuck on your head? Oh! And it's after this that Homer gets into great shape and has finally gotten his life together. You finally reached emotional maturity, unlike Bart. But all this good though didn't stop Homer from dying once again at age 70. But this time, Frink is all out of clones, so he downloads Homer's brain onto a flash drive, so he now exists as a floating, dismembered head on a TV screen. What's worse is that after decades of wifely obedience, Marge is finally at her wit's end, so she kicks Homer out of the house and gives the flash drive to Bart. But Homer isn't confined to just a TV screen anymore, as he's been sent a new robot body so he can actually be mobile. Hey, where's my junk? Oh. Woof. A nice touch throughout these episodes is that it shows Homer still being a great grandfather, letting them chase him around the house, babysitting, and even letting them hit him with baseball bats. Uh, yeah, open your stance a little there. Oh, yeah, that did. Aww. At the end of the episode, Homer is now an advanced golden robot, and he and Marge have reconciled once again. Even my personality has gotten, shall we say, an upgrade. In a strange turn of events or heightened technology, 79-year-old Homer has somehow got his body back. Bart is now the Supreme Court Justice of the United States and Homer is so proud of his little boy and finally rewards him by letting him watch the Itchy and Scratchy movie. I love that Homer and Bart have finally reconciled after their long, turbulent relationship. Homer always feared for Bart's future, but I think this was really a mirror of his own insecurities and how his own dad made him feel. You don't know it now, but I've started you on the road to somewhere very special. Sometime during his 90s, Homer will once again go back to being a robot before finally becoming a hologram. Hmm, thank God we still have his hologram. <laughs> so yes, I have just outlined for you the complete Homer Simpson timeline. We've seen him mature into fatherhood, even if it did take a long time, observed him conquer his demons, and saw how he managed to succeed even after a pretty devastating childhood. Now all I need is for The Simpsons to release an episode completely retconning everything I've listed, but if they do, then a wizard did it. <laughs>